Hey, Hawks fans, happy Wednesday, and welcome into our Hawks social shoot around. Bob Rathman in the house today. Bob, you excited about this one? The Mavs in town, and cross our fingers, we actually get to see Luca and Trey face off tonight. I know, I am excited. I think our fans are excited anytime that Trey and Luca uh, get together, whether it's a all-star game or, or here in the regular season, it's a big night and uh, we're excited about the game. Yeah, a, a lot's made of, of Luca and Trey, but uh, this Mavericks team, I mean, they got a lot of good guys and Kristaps Porzingis is back and playing for them. Um, I, I know he battled some injuries to begin the season, but they come in here tonight having lost six straight. You certainly don't want that to turn around on the Hawks clock, but um, give the fans a little bit of a, a preview as to what you kind of know about the, the Mavs as they head in here, where they are, and then just what you think the Hawks can really take advantage of tonight. Yeah, this is a much different Dallas team than the one we've seen uh, with Luca these past couple of years. This season, Kelly and fans, uh, their offense has fallen off the face of the earth. This was the number one offensive efficiency team in the NBA last season. And they come into Atlanta 20th. They're the worst three-point shooting team in the league, which is very strange. Uh, Luca, now here's something, Hawks fans, you know, who are constantly into the Trey versus Luca comparisons. Mm -hmm. Trey's three-point percentage has gone up every year he's been in the NBA. Luca's has gone down every year since he's been in the NBA and he's sub 30% from three, despite the fact that in the month of January, he averaged a triple double. So it's a very different looking Dallas team. You mentioned the players that they've had out with uh, COVID protocol. They're all back now. Um, they Kleba got back on Monday. He's the last of the three that have been sitting out, but uh, they have so many guys really only, Former Hawk Tim Hardaway Jr. is approaching uh, his normal three-point percentage. Everybody else is way, way down. And that's one of the reasons that they've been struggling. They come in here tonight, 8-13. and 13. They're 13th in the Western Conference. And they're in a little bit of trouble. And unless they get this thing turned around, uh, they it's going to be hard for them in the West. I mean, you're, you're 21 games in, which in a 72-game season doesn't seem like that much. But still, as tough as the West can be, you don't want to get buried. So this is a big week. They've got Golden State tomorrow night back home. Uh, they've got Golden State again in Dallas on Saturday. So this is a big week for them. And uh, they've already dropped that game to Phoenix Monday when Devin Booker beat him with a three with a second and a half to go. So uh, this will be a desperate Dallas team that comes in here tonight. Yeah, I mean, currently, as they sit, and like you said, we're only 20, 21 games in, but they're not a playoff team. Um, and tonight, you know, Hawks – Hawks are as they enter this game, a little bit of role reversal in a way. And you mentioned uh, Lucas three point shots. That that doesn't mean he's not taking a lot. The guy's taking a lot of three pointers and missing a lot of them too. Mm -hmm. So I mean, um, I, I know that I know that um, in speaking with Trey yesterday, and we'll run some of that uh, this evening in our pregame show that gets started at seven o'clock. So please join us there. And also as we continue on with this Hawks social shoot around. Ask Bob some questions. I know I tweeted it out yesterday. I, Bob, I want to stump you. I mean, there's so much <laughs> knowledge in that nugget of yours. Nugget, noggin, noggin. That's what I was going for. Um, but I, I'd love to see if our fans can uh, come up with some good questions while we have you here this afternoon. But um, give me something from watching the Hawks hang in there with the Lakers and really just fall short on Monday rebounding tonight the importance of that really when you look at this stretch then that continues on mm -hmm. um you know with utah tomorrow and then they got toronto coming in this weekend well i i think kelly and fans what we all need to do is just take a deep breath <laughs> and relax a little uh this is a ball club that was 27 games under 500 last year new to our team is clint capella he has made all the difference uh, with his rebounding, his shot blocking, anchoring the middle, as we thought he would do. This is not the team that we envisioned having. We thought that Bogdanovich and Dunn and all these guys, uh, you know, Gallo to some extent, would be playing prominent roles, and they've yet to do that. So basically, we've got last year's team with Capella. 
to be 10 and 10, outstanding, doing great. Uh, Hunter's coming on like a big leaguer in his second year. Trey is obviously having another fine season. Capella has uh, anchored the middle. So things are coming around. I think we're so anxious to see this club, you know, really take over uh, and, and be a force in the Eastern Conference. It will come in time. And when you get tested against the better teams, it kind of exposes you a little bit. You know, at the end of the third quarter, the start of the fourth on Monday night against the Lakers, that's probably when the game was lost. Uh, the Lakers went on a 16-0 run that we really couldn't recover from, but hung in there with the world champs and played them right to the end. So that's a very encouraging sign. I think the fact that uh, we've got uh, – a three and eight record against teams with 500 tells us that we have work to do. Uh, the fact that we haven't won a game yet that's been decided by six points or fewer tells us that we have work to go, do in close games. But in the overall big picture, I think this ball club is doing just fine. And uh, a big week to challenge yourself. Another test tonight. Don't be deceived. Uh, this Dallas team is going to be desperate. And in this league, you don't want to play teams on losing streaks that are desperate. And Dallas is certainly there. So this will be a tough test tonight, no doubt about it. But I think the encouraging thing for all of us is the fact that we're there. We're eager. Uh, it'll be nice to get Dre back, um, you know, maybe later this week from that knee yeah. and uh, and get our get our club back on in, in one piece and see what we can do. Yeah, the last injury report I saw had um, DeAndre out um, this evening against the Mavs, but he is supposed to be reevaluated this afternoon, and that should give them a better idea of what he'll be capable of here than in the next couple days. And maybe they get him back. They certainly would like to. They could have used him the other night. I thought about that a couple of times against the Lakers. Man, it'd be really nice if he were there for for, for Lloyd to turn to right now and, and just the, the depth that that takes away then. Um, but you can see Bob Robert has a question and would like to know if we could see a breakout game from John Collins tonight. I'm, I'm guessing that means tonight um, against the Mavs. Does this, is this a matchup you feel like for him that, that he could take advantage of? Oh, yes. <laughs> he, uh, he can kill these guys. You know, he's, he's going against, if they start Kleba at the four, uh, then Dallas has got some coverage problems with John. Uh, he has destroyed them in the past. I don't see any reason as to why he couldn't do it again here tonight. Uh, he's had great numbers against the Mavericks in his career. Uh, John's a tough cover for anybody, much less the Mavs. Um, I, I really do think uh, all right, Robert hit it right on the head. This is a matchup on our favor tonight and one that uh, the Hawks will look to exploit. You know, and, and something that, I, again, any night I think we can see John Collins go off, just like any number of Hawks players, really. But I think what really stood out to me the other night about the matchup with the Lakers, and, and it's just not something we necessarily get to talk about. It's not exactly sexy, if you will, but what – he did on the defensive end against LA the other night. I just saw him all over the floor. And, and like I said, it's not always things that we're pointing out, but the way they were switching on screens at times. And I just saw him really doing a lot of thing and, and, and help defense that I've, I've seen him improve on. And so I, again, I, I think that John is going to have these games or we'll, we'll talk about his offense, but I, I've really enjoyed watching the improvement he's made on the defensive end um, this year. And and I'd be curious to know your thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, you know, John, uh, he's been the only Hawk to start every game uh, so far this season. And he's sort of one of those anchors uh, yeah. for this ball club that you can count on John every night. I'm looking at his numbers, 17 points a game. He's at almost eight rebounds a game. He's playing 31 minutes a night. He could probably play more minutes, but with the depth, he's not he not requested to play that many uh, this season. But John is a modicum of consistency. You know, here's a guy that's over 50% from the field. He's at 40% on threes. We know he's good rebounding, uh, particularly at the offensive end. So this is a guy who's been very consistent. Uh, when they he's so good around the basket, Kelly, as you've seen, not only uh, with the lobs, but but yeah, he is. He's fun to watch. He's a hustler. Uh, he doesn't take nights off. Mm -hmm. He's good pretty much any night out there against any uh, opponent, and I think that's why he's gotten the recognition that he's gotten uh, as a really solid starter in this league. Uh, 
once he got that three-point shot going last year, it mm -hmm. really expanded his offensive game. And now he's a tough cover because you've got to respect the lob. He's good enough to shoot that three, particularly the, the straight-on three that you see so often. So he's a hard cover, and uh, I'm glad he's on our side. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think about what KD had to say about him, right, being one of the best to slip behind defenses in that pick and roll and, and how difficult of a cover, as you mentioned, it makes it. Bob, I want to, for a second, before we move on, I want to brag about you. If you have it in front of you right now, I saw you glance down and say, well, let me take a look at my notes. You take – the most incredible notes and you come into every game with these sheets that just have so many little pointers that I don't know if you can hold that up and show people what it is that you get ready each night with. And um, I guess also, yeah, tell us how that process evolved for you. Well, uh, it's just a kind of changed over the years, I guess, Kelly, is the best way to say it. I used to do it all by hand, but uh, thank goodness I, I got dragged kicking and screaming into the information age, and so now I do it all on my laptop, but I used to do it all by hand. But I keep a player page uh, for all of our guys and uh, just sort of try to bring our fans uh, information about our team and about the other team that you're just not going to get anywhere else. And of course I work in concert with, with our producer, Jill Gossard cook and our, uh, our great graphics team uh, led by Brandon Culpepper. So we all sort of work together to try to get this information out, but I'm, I'm just a basketball junkie basically when you get down to it and the team and Fox is, is so nice to be able to give me all these tools to use. And so yeah. I'm like digging in there all the time, <laughs> trying to find little nuggets that we can uh, come up with, but it's just what I've found the NBA game moves so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, that you don't have a whole lot of time, yeah. you know, to tell stories. So you just need little, little tidbits here and there, and then use them at the right time. And so I'm, I'm lucky to work with a great team that allows me to do that. When he says baseball or basketball junkie, for instance, we finally have a Saturday, Sunday off and I go, Bob, what are you going to do with your two days off? And he goes, I'm going to watch every college basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> and you know yeah. what? It's funny. You mentioned um, the speed at which the NBA game is played. I found myself the other night, last night I was watching Illinois and Indiana play. And that was something I'm just like, gosh, when you start watching these college games, you really it yeah. puts in perspective the speed of just that next level. Because I was like, man, does it slow down in college. But yeah. it's fun to watch those guys and just kind of imagine which ones at the next level, you know, you know are going to be able to make it and, and kind of put their imprint on the game. But Let's go back real quick to the Mavs and the Hawks tonight. What else besides everyone wants to talk about, you know, Luca and Trey, but what, what else about this matchup intrigues you or what is it that, you know, is one little thing you're also looking forward to seeing tonight? Well, you know, the, the defensive improvement of the Hawks, I think is going to be a, a big story tonight. Uh, okay. You know, Atlanta has done a very good job defending the three-point line. So if you've got a Dallas team that's struggling with the three, you know, where's Dallas going to look for their points? And if you look at the analytics, this is a team that loves to drive the basketball. Uh, you know, Luke is a big part of that, of course, but they like to drive it. Uh, they get a huge percentage of their points going to the hole. So now with Capella back there, that will change the equation for the Hawks. You know, when you've got somebody that can protect that rim like Clint, that takes away another strength of Dallas, or at least it alters it some. Not yes. that you can stop NBA players, but it'll change the, the look a bit defensively. So I'm intrigued to see what the Hawks can do defensively uh, to mm -hmm. further frustrate this Dallas team. Now, if they come out and get hot from three, it's, it's going to change things. But uh, so far this season, uh, they have really struggled on that three ball. So they're going to have to look at other things, other ways to try to get uh, their points and see what matchups they'll go to. But the statistics tell us that they love to drive the basketball, and I'm not sure that that's going to be as available as they might think. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a great thing to keep an eye on. And then, you know, we mentioned John Collins. Could be a big night for him. Um, who else? Who else? I mean, I, I we know Trey can go off any night. Is this mm -hmm. a night that we also see Clint Capella again, you know, um, have a – 
Tri you triple double, a double double. I mean, that guy has just been incredible this mm -hmm. year. I mean, yeah, he's been uh, we're going to see Cam Reddish more than likely in the starting lineup again this evening. And he's a guy that I would love to see find a little more consistency because we, we saw him come off the bench, you know, get 24 the other night. And then against the Lakers, granted, he was being asked a lot of on the defensive end, but we didn't see him really find his rhythm offensively. So he's another guy that I, I'd love to see come out tonight and maybe find a way to get a little more involved in the offense early. Well, he's certainly uh, capable. Um, last year, it, it was a rough start for him shooting the basketball. It did other things well, but his mm -hmm. shot uh, was just not there, particularly from three at the beginning of the season. And as he got into the rhythm of the season, uh, it got much better. And by the end of our season in March, when the shutdown came, uh, he was really rolling. Uh, his March numbers at both ends of the floor were terrific. Uh, shooting it well, aggressive, and and you could see with that defense the way he can yeah. steal it and alter guys and you know fight through screens and defending defending the pick and roll. Uh, he was terrific. So we kind of think, you know, basketball, we all tend to think is a linear game. Well, we're just, he's just going to pick up where he left off in March, but it doesn't work that way, especially for a young player. Mm -hmm. And trying with the additional depth of this Hawks team, how is he going to get his minutes? Where are they going to come from? Does he start? Does he come off the bench? Does he play the two, the three? So all of that's coming into play. And I think, again, for Cam, with the injuries that he's had, he's been dinged up. I think he's missed 13 games now in his career. Um, to, that has added, Kelly, to your point of the inconsistency uh, that we've seen from Cam. But he's certainly – uh, very capable, uh, and we wait for those 24-point outbursts uh, each night when he comes into the game because he's got that kind of talent. It's just a matter of a young player learning his way. And a lot of these guys are still very young. Oh, yeah. They're just starting their NBA career, so they're learning as they go. And don't forget, they read the clippings. They hear – the TV and the talk shows, they know that there is a level of expectation uh, with this Hawks team. And that ratchets up the pressure just a little bit more. So uh, I'll be looking at Cam tonight. He'll be back in that starting lineup and, and uh, he'll play a key role if the Hawks are going to go on to win this. I know Hawks fans, as they look at this game, they always hold their breath about Tim Hardaway Jr. <laughs> he was with us, you know, he's gone on. He left us to join the Knicks and then he went to Dallas. And for some reason, uh, he loves to stick it to the Hawks. And he can get hot as hot can be. Yeah. And when he hits that first one, usually there's two or three more coming after that. And I mentioned earlier, he's one of the few Mavs that is shooting it well from three, at least close to his career norms. So if he gets it going, that could be an X factor tonight to watch for. Okay. And, uh, you know, you mentioned Cam and some of these young guys learn it, continuing to learn it, how to – get going or find themselves in this league. And they're trying to do that this year in a COVID year where they're not getting a lot of practices and they're not getting normal shoot arounds. I try to keep that in mind as well. Cause I, I think it can sometimes get lost in like this next year of progression was under the understanding that it might be a normal year for them to make that next jump, but it, it is not, it is so far from a normal year. And um, you brought up, I'm going to, transition this into Coco Bomi. I hope I'm saying that right. It's question about wanting to know whether Goodwin will get some playing time tonight, Brandon Goodwin. And I'd like to further that a little bit. I want you to let us know your thoughts on Brandon Goodwin getting some playing time. And then because we did see Rondo the other night and the last couple nights really come out with that second unit, push the pace. We saw them pull away, honestly, in, in some moments where that, that, did I lose you? I'm sorry. No, I'm here. Guys, okay. Sorry about that. That's technology. Let me let me um, pull this back. Up. Okay, there we go. So uh, that second unit tonight. How do you see them maybe against the second unit of Dallas? Because I feel like that's another possible area where the Hawks could really take advantage tonight. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the same depth like you were saying that we've known from Dallas in the past. Right. Uh, I think Goodwin's numbers uh, in terms of his minutes tonight uh, really depend on how much Rondo is going to play. Uh, if Rondo is going to get the normal rotational minutes uh, like he did against the Lakers, probably Goodwin does not get into the game. But if, if Rondo, you know, tells Lloyd that uh, the knee's a little sore and maybe not tonight, 
you know, you'll see Goodwin come in. Uh, that's the life of the third point guard in the NBA. You just never know quite when your number is going to get called. But we know that Brandon will give us the great minutes uh, with his hustle and his uh, his playmaking, et cetera. We would love to see that shot come around. He's frustrated uh, with his yeah. ability to, to get going offensively when he has to shoot it. But he's out there to play defense and, and, and you know, keep – keep the seat warm for Trey to get back in that game. So um, I think one of the things about Rondo, you know, there's no love loss between him and Dallas. You know, he got traded there from Boston, uh, lasted only a half a year, uh, and he left to go to Sacramento, and it, it changed the face of, of several franchises, the Celtics, sure Dallas, and Sacramento. Yep. But they that, that did not work. And so probably – you know, he wouldn't mind getting back at Dallas a little bit if he gets the opportunity, even though it's been a while since he played. So that's another little storyline uh, on that one. But uh, depth is, you know, second unit play in the regular season, Kelly, is always key, uh, particularly this year when you've got the lack of practice time, you've got all this COVID testing, everybody's schedule is upside down. I think the teams that can get through this with quality depth are going to, you know, make their way into the playoffs. Um, playoff depth is a different story, you know, you, particularly uh, in the bubble last year. You know, we saw some odd results in a way mm -hmm. because there was no travel. You weren't facing a, a raucous road crowd, but the the benches shorten obviously in the postseason. But to get there, you've got to have great depth and you've got to learn how to play different ways. You've got to be able to play a low scoring game. You got to be able to play a high scoring game. And for the Hawks, I think that's is something that we're learning as we go. Um, I don't think you can really judge our second unit uh, appropriately until we have everybody there. It's you hard. Yeah, we haven't seen bogey with yeah. them. And this, he might be a starter, you know, it, it, right. you know, so I just don't, think we can really tell until we get, you know, Chris Dunn was brought in here to be that defensive dog to come in. We haven't seen him, but we won't for weeks. Um, you know, we're not going to see bogey for a while. It's been about a, what, a month now since yeah. he went down. So uh, we got to get these guys back. And then I think you can properly evaluate the second unit. I agree. I agree. Well, Bob, um, questions are slowing down just a bit. So I'm going to promote tonight our coverage beginning at seven o'clock. And then we've got the Hawks and Mavs coming your way at 730. So please be sure and join us. We'll have a lot more. I'm really excited. The one on one I got to do with Trey Young yesterday, talking to him about Luca. We're going to run that in two parts. The first part's going to come tonight. The second part's going to come tomorrow night against Utah. Trey was really great. Um, I, I really enjoyed that conversation. I think fans will too. I mean, you know, he gets asked so often about that relationship and, and all the narratives that are behind the Trey and Luca, Trey and Luca. And, and he kind of gave me something that I don't, I'm not sure fans have heard yet. So I hope that's a good little tease. And then, Bob, I'll leave it before we wrap up with any last um, storyline that, that you're excited about or want to tell fans to keep an eye on tonight. We've sure hit a lot. So if you don't have one, that's okay. Mm. No, <laughs> but there's I, probably more to it. I wouldn't say so much, Kelly, a storyline, but I think you discovered it in talking with Trey yesterday. The media has built this up to be a rivalry where these guys don't like each other. They're trying to outdo one another. Uh, they'll be forever joined at the hip because of the draft night trade. These guys really like each other. They're yeah. friends. And you can see it last year. Yes, and you could see it last year in the All-Star game. So what I hope, is that both guys play great and obviously the Hawks come out with a victory, but I want to see a great game, two great stars that are going to be dominating this league for a long time to come. And we're so lucky that, you know, we've got Trey on our side. They've got Luca, both franchises and fan bases are very happy with what they have. So let it roll. Let play it a great roll. game. And let's have fun. That's right. Let's tip. Let's do this. Bob, it was so much fun. Thank you again. And thank you to all of you who uh, sent your questions to us. And, and we'll do this again a couple Wednesdays from today. So until then, we'll see you tonight at seven o'clock.